so as we discussed in the previous video that we can relate the s domain to the z domain like that if sigma is equal to 0 in s domain then we get the imaginary j omega axis and it is represented by the unit circle with r is equal to 1 in the z domain and again if there is a pole at a certain distance sigma is equal to suppose 2 or 4 then it will be represented by a unit by a circle or ring in the z domain with a radius r is equal to that value of sigma okay that is a absolute of that sigma then if there is a point at infinite distance sigma is equal to minus infinity then that point is is indicated by a dot or point at origin see and the z is equal to zero you can say that point origin point is indicating the pole at infinite distance as the radius of the circle r is equal to zero okay so these properties of rvc can be discussed with respect to this representation or relation of s and z domain and we can conclude that roc origin of convergence of x z consists of a ring in the z plane centered about origin okay so this is the circle or ring which is centered about the origin in z domain so this is the region of convergence uh, the circle will be indicating the region of convergence in the z domain output and roc does not contain any pole so we can see that this pole sigma is equal to minus 2 and each corresponding roc uh, is equal to a charcoal here and it is radius is r is equal to 2 z is equal to 2 so the roc is 0 to uh, 0 less than r less than 2 so all the charcoals inside this radius r is equal to 2 will be in including included in the roc so and this r less than 2 means that we are not including the radius with circle 2 so it's all the points within this radius are included in the roc that is why we are saying that the roc does not contain the any pole or that point because that circle is not included we are taking the inside below because that within that will values within that radius will be resulting only the stable z transform output okay if xn is a right shaded signal that means at a discrete time signal which is defined only for t greater than zero or n and greater than zero that is known as right shaded signal so that right shaded signal its roc is represented by mode z is greater than a so so if xn is at the point n un so this is the right sided signal for defined for n greater than 0 and its z transform is obtained like this z by z minus so we will discuss how to get this z transform from the signal but we are just considering here the output of z transform at z by z minus a so this z transform output is defined for mode z greater than mode a so mode a so this a uh, this is what we are seeing that right sided signal output so this is a right sided signal and its radius is more z greater than mode a so for a we are getting a circle with radius a and all the points of z so which are greater than a and outside this circle will be the reason of convergence for this uh, z transform similarly if xn is a left sided signal then all points mode z less than a will be the region of convergence for the z transform <coughs> so this signal minus a to the power n u minus n minus 1 it says z transform is same with the earlier signal so from the output of z transform we are getting the same result but the roc is different as this is a negative sided signal or left sided signal so its roc is less than mode a okay so it will be inside the radius of the circle inside a okay and again if xn is a two-sided signal 
then both ROC will be included like if a signal has a summation of these two XN and this signal then we are getting ROC both sides like greater than A and less than A both ROCs will be included so that is why we are writing that for all A Z is defined for all A okay so this is why we are saying that XN if it is two sided then ROC will be mode Z equal to A so this is the basic uh, concept or rule that we can use for finding the reason of convergence for any Z transformation output.